Okay, uh, so let's start today. Uh, so today's topic is something new uh, from last year. Uh, so today we will uh, basically, or not me, but our uh, teacher Christoph Fink uh, will show you how to use Python in, in Quantum GIS, uh, which is cool uh, and something new also for me. So I'm also waiting waiting to hear how you do things in here. Uh, so the idea is to basically show you how to create a script in uh, Quantum GIS, how to run some algorithms from Quantum GIS and create this kind of toolbox that you can basically use use them to run run stuff. Uh, this is kind of a similar lesson that we had last year, but last year we used ArcGIS and, and ArcPy uh, module in, in ArcGIS, which is doing, well, the idea is to do the same things, but now in Quantum GIS. If you're interested about how to use ArcPy and ArcGIS Python module, uh, there is the last year's lesson materials available in here, so you can go and take a look of, of those if you're interested of, of those. Uh, so I guess I don't have anything else to say at this point of time, so I would like to welcome Chris to come and, and teach us thanks. how to teach you. <laughs> uh, hi, um, yeah. I'm Chris. I'm with the Digital Geography Lab since September and it's actually my very first time to teach in, in Finland, so it's quite an interesting experience. I've never taken any course in Finland either, so let's see how that is. <laughs> um, which computer is what? Oh, this one, yeah. Um, we, we, we are going to see uh, Hen Henker mentioned most of it already. Uh, I'm going to sh going, going to show you how to use Python within uh, QGIS, and um, we are going to work again with the same data set you already used for uh, the GeoPandas examples. Um, there was some some error in the data set though, so please download it again if you have it somewhere stored on the site, um, and. Yeah, that's kind of what, what I want you to know after this lesson or what I want you to, to be able to do is uh, write a simple algorithm or combine different different tools into a tool chain to, to do something easy or fairly easy or fairly complex with easy, easy tools or fairly easy tools. And um, maybe as an introduction, um, you might have seen also that, where is that? Um, that there's a new uh, instance, a new image on the on the GeoCloud um, platform, like this 2017 image now, um, which uh, already contains uh, QGIS 3.0, um, which is not yet released. It's in the course of being released, but there's so many things which change and it's supposed to come out actually last November, like last <laughs> month, but uh, it's going to come out soon. And there's many things which are changing, so I thought it might be better to show you the new one and not the old one. Um, we might just start that already. We, we run into a few troubles uh, exactly out of that reason, because it's not yet released, so there's not yet all documentation, but I'm going to show you and I put the links into into the, the pages where you find them. It might be that they only show up in a month or in two weeks or after Christmas. Also put a link to, where to download the version. Yes, yeah, it's uh, just if you update, it's, it's, it should be there. And if you work on, on Windows, uh, this OSGeo 4W installer uh, allows you to choose the dev version to like this QKIS dash def, I think, dev, and that's the only way to install it on Windows really reliably. Um, and currently it ships as 2.99 because it's almost 3.0. And so where's my... Ah, yeah, first one, good. <laughs> 
and you copied the address yeah, already. Yes. If you want to follow, I have some public information. Yeah. 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 Something's happening here. Um, so pretty much everything is is uh, updated here to. Uh, Python 3 to that's also a thing which changes with QGIS 3 that it's finally using Python 3 uh, Which also makes it easier to use all the other tools you used already in this, in this course And it has a new logo too um, Having said that uh, Python is a really important uh, a really important component of QGIS in, in many reasons um, You might have noticed that uh, QGIS has uh, this plugin ecosystem where you can like from this menu plugins manage and install plugins you can uh, see a lot of different not so so many yet for QGIS 3 but for QGIS 2 there exists some 800 plugins uh, people wrote for different things and they are actually written in Python that's that's more advanced that we're gonna cover today uh, but it's still fairly easy to to write your own uh, professional plugin for for doing uh, special tasks and um, so behind the scenes, uh, Python is already really involved in QGIS. Uh, then the other thing is if you, everything of QGIS is also opened as a, as a Python API. So if you want to write your own program, so to say in Python, which uses, for example, the map window of QGIS or the vector layer handler of QGIS, you can just do that in Python. So uh, Python is really prominent within QHS and that's also reflected in the way um, how, how you can use it to, to automate things. Um, maybe I go out of that plugin window again. Um, but we're going to go back in there in a moment um, because there's this Python console which comes with, with uh, QGIS by, stand by default. Um, and it's fine, it has a few features and it's okay, but what it, but it's still quite rudimentary. Uh, what I usually recommend uh, all students to use is uh, this plugin, which is the IPython console. So if you go to this plugins, manage and, is it manage and install, install and manage? Plugins, manage and install plugins. Um, and search here for the IPython console and install that plugin. Then you have a much more advanced and sophisticated Python console, which is then now in this menu, plugins, IPython console. I usually use this windowed version because you can put it on one side. And does it open too? Yes, there we are. Um, where's the plus of the finish? Yes. And it already tells you a few things here, which are de by default enabled in all those consoles. Uh, you always have uh, one, uh, one element, which is called iFace, which is the interface of QGIS. So actually the, the actual program behind you, uh, behind this window. Um, and uh, in this interactive IPython console, which is pretty much the same than in, in the spider uh, IDE you use. Um, uh, you can just show also the, the object I face and you see that it's uh, an instance of QGIS interface. Um, I'm now gonna add already a layer here to, uh, to QGIS and that's also something which changed in, in uh, QGIS 3, but you can still choose layer, add layer. But what happens is here's this universal layer it uh, tool too. And I remember that I downloaded it somewhere here. Yeah. It's this damselfish dataset. And why did I open that? Oh yeah, I opened that because I wanted to show you that uh, we can already really easily access it here. Like the interface has has a member function and I'm gonna show you in a moment where to where to look all that, that up uh, which is called active layer uh, 
sorry, German keyboard used to. Um, and that's the layer here in the background. So that uh, the layer which is currently selected if you have more than one. And uh, where is the Chrome? And uh, there is this qgis.org slash API is the documentation for all this, for all these objects. And a bit larger, you know, where you can, for example, search for this QGIS interface object, you know. Yeah, there's a typo because some of the objects actually have an S in there and this one does. Some are QGS and some are QGIS. So. And if I search for that, then I see here the, the documentation for what this uh, class can do. That's already quite advanced and we're going to to become a bit slower in a moment, <laughs> no worries. Um, but uh, just to point you where to find all documentation on, on these objects. And it has a lot of functions which you can call, and one of them is this uh, active layer. No. Layer. Oh no, that's set active layer, it also contains that. Zoom to active layer, and active layer, which returns uh, a map layer object. Um, do you want to show you here still? Oh yeah, we could. We can now also say, for example, that we have a variable layer which should refer to this active layer. And um, this layer, I'm not gonna gonna go back to Chrome because I have it here in the notes already. Uh, this layer, for example, has a, has a function to show its name and um, also its feature, its number of features. 231 features, okay. And yeah, I showed you. I showed you in Chrome how to find this API documentation. But if you're now here uh, and you have a variable which is called layer, but you don't know where it was assigned, uh, then you can also just use help and layer. That's a feature of this IPython console, uh, and then it tells you a lot, and that's so much that you can't even scroll all the way up. I think. Yeah, so not really useful right now for this object. So let's go a bit slower. Um, one of the core plugins uh, which comes with uh, QGIS is the processing toolbox. It's um, basically a set of, of uh, predefined algorithms. You can access it from processing toolbox. Um, and then you get this window over here with a list of different algorithms which are built into QGIS or delivered by, by other plugins, for example, this GDAL uh, program or the Grass GIS or also Sager GIS. Um, many of them or all of them are actually written in, in Python. Um, and what would be a classical GIS command, which we would use often? I don't know. I'm, I'm going with buffer, for example, and if I search here for a tool which can everybody read that or is that too small? Uh, if I search here for buffer, uh, you see that there's 10-ish uh, different algorithms which, which implement one kind of buffer or not. And if I now would, for example, run this buffer tool by double-clicking it, then I see what that looks really much like uh, people of, of who of you uh, has, has used ArcGIS model builder before. That's exactly the same thing. Um, and the ArcGIS uh, toolboxes. So you can set different options and then run this algorithm. So if I run that now on the damsel, damsel fish, then that takes forever. So maybe I cancel it again. Oh no, there it comes. Yeah, 
80%, 90%. And there we are. And that's of course a bit awful because I didn't, I didn't uh, consider what kind of, of uh, parameters to set, but you see that we now buffered all features on this dumbbell, damselfish uh, layer and it uh, in fact became a new layer and added here. This is a temporary layer, so if you want to keep it, you should right click and save it. Um, we don't want to keep it though, it's not really worth here anything. Um, and also, if I run that one algorithm only, like that one tool, uh, it doesn't really um, facilitate an easy and fast, uh, easy and fast work. Um, but if I now have, uh, like there's, there's uh, different ways uh, this uh, toolbox can be used more efficiently. Um, for example, I can uh, run this buffer tool on 10 different layers uh, in, in a row batch mode. Um, or the other thing is, I can, like in, in ArcGIS, from this processing graphical modeler, build uh, a model which consists of more than one tool. So let's say as an example, um, we want to save a shapefile which takes uh, only one, one species um, features and saves them to, to different layer. Uh, that involves at least, um, and we want to simplify it too, so we have a second step. Um, so that involves at least selecting something and then simplifying it. Um, and here in this processing, processing modeling uh, window, um, you can add different input parameters and different algorithms and basically you can draw lines between them uh, to connect them the inputs and the out uh, the outputs um, so as an input here for for my idea of um, selecting and then and then simplifying hey where's Ah, there. Oh, I just didn't find the vector layer for a moment. Um, we need, uh, let's, let's make our model in a way that we can tell it a, a layer name and a, a species name and it would automatically simplify that, that species data and, and save it somewhere. Um, so we need one layer name as an input, which might be called input layer, no? Input Euler's, almost. And uh, we want to have a string input, which is the species. Yeah. Yeah. And then we need two different tools from these algorithms. One being um, the select by attribute. And here it proposes already to use input layer as the, as the layer, as an, as an input layer, and the species uh, parameter, which we just defined as an, uh, as an attribute. Oh, but that's actually wrong. We only want to have it in, in, in value. Um, in fact, we have to look, hey, okay, go on the side. Uh, we have to look up, um, and I have to close that window, okay. We have to look up from the attribute table where the species are actually saved in, because I don't remember that. Um, okay, so the column is apparently called binomial, uh, where we want to match against. And I again put this uh, algorithm in here then say I want to match against the attribute binomial and I want to compare it to this string species we, we put in. And now I have this algorithm here which draws on these two things. And the output of this, of this tool
this <coughs> okay it's not it's not uh, shown here but it's it's a layer with features um, and we're going to use that layer as the input for this simplification tool let me just take this simplified geometries here so I use this output of the select by attribute algorithm and then because that's already our final uh, output we have to supply a name for this layer and I just call it simplified species but that's yeah arbitrary um, now I could already run this tool um, but what is always good to do before that give it a name because it's gonna show up in in this list on the right hand side as soon as uh, as I press uh, run or, or save um, and I'm gonna call this now export one species and simplified um, and I'm gonna put it into a group which I call conservation geography and then I can save this model I just save it where it's in this default uh, directory because that's the this long path here is where QGIS is going to search for new models and I just call that here now just some file name speech, uh, export species and save it and then here on the right side oh, no that was too far just wanted to clear the search uh, here on the right side under models there's now a category or a toolbox conservation uh, geography and in there is our one tool export the one species simplified and if I open that now it asks me exactly for the input I just specify, specified so uh, an input layer and the species I want to export and unfortunately I don't remember any of the species now um, but let's I don't know let's go with this stegas des bbi how was it Baby, yeah. <laughs> um, baby. <laughs> is there any biologist here? No. <laughs> um, and I, I leave it here as the default save to a temporary file. Then it's gonna add, be added to the to the map window. Um, but I could here also say that it's uh, supposed to be saved into some shape file or somewhere. And if I now run that, it runs the two algorithms behind its other and oh, apparently that fish is everywhere but you see how the algorithms also got uh, simplified a lot actually so that's maybe too much but yeah so but that was now not involving a lot of, of Python did it um, but <laughs> you see down here that there's not only models but also scripts and this uh, model builder this graphical model builder has a few shortcomings in in direct comparison to um, for example real programming in, in a scripting language um, there's no loops there's no real logic involved you can only use this uh, predefined uh, algorithm packages these tools um, and that's why um, this processing toolbox allows you to write own scripts to and use all of those tools unfortunately as I said the documentation for this part is apparently not yet finished at least it's not yet published um, but uh, there's this online help to some extent and I'm gonna open that maybe in in the course pages. No, 
no, one further. Even one further. Um, there's this processing module and um, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to dive into it and you can go along here. Um, I'm opening again this uh, IPython uh, console and didn't remember that I wanted larger font size so you can read it too. And here I can import processing. Um, now maybe to mention here um, Python is is fairly complex on most computers so the installations are fairly complex because it's so highly modular uh, and it has such a um, such a multifaceted ecosystem of different models and different versions and uh, most uh, most programs bring their own included python installation um, that means that this that not everything is available anywhere uh, so for example this processing module if I would open a normal uh, terminal on, on the same computer, a normal Python in, in Spider, for example, and uh, type input processing, it wouldn't be available. So this is a module which, is, which you can only import if you're inside QGIS. Um, and yeah, previously, but it unfortunately doesn't work right now because it's, I don't know, not yet finished. Um, you could get you could get a list of algorithms by calling processing alg list, but yeah, as I said, that doesn't work right now. Um, but what you can do is get a list of algorithms from Cookie's uh, application. Um, what was that? Uh, processing registry. Uh, yes, like we have this, I, I do it in two steps. Um, we have a processing registry which registers, no, registers all of the installed, um, like the installed uh, tools and algorithms. And within this a registry, of course, there's also a list of algorithms. And it's a very long list of different uh, things, which is why to search for, for something specific, you can, for example, search for the buffer tool again. I define now a, a string variable, which is buffer, which I want to search for it. And then I loop over these algorithms I just had for A in these processing registries algorithms. No, how did that work? Yep. For every single of these algorithms, if it's a name, A dot name, Oh no, actually, if its name contains this search term, which the other way around reads, if the search term is within the name, uh, this loop should, should print the ID of the, that algorithm. If I run that, I get this list of, of algorithms which contains buffers. Um, and it's it's exactly this uh, no, wrong mouse cursor. Um, it's exactly the same list of of algorithms I would get from over here, except that they are referred to by their ID, which I can use in, in the scripting. Um, the same for loop, by the way, uh, goes a bit faster too, and I want to show that because I put it into into the the documentation. Um, a very Pythonic uh, language feature is this list comprehension. That means, uh, like a list is is any list of of different 
uh, variables or values like I don't know let's make a which are comma separated list Oop. Uh, and put into square brackets it's an array in, in other languages and uh, what what now works in in Python is that uh, I can put the for loop within here so I can say uh, give me a ID for every a in uh, processing registries algorithms and then I would get this long list of of algorithms uh, but um, and it's a bit confusing at first uh, but maybe uh, if you revisit that in, in a year or a couple of years, it might seem really logical. Um, behind here, I can still write a condition. Uh, if this a.name uh, contains our search term, and then I get the short list. And that's a really fast way of searching for, for these processing tools. Um, if I now know I want to use this, for example, this native buffer uh, tool, then I still don't know how to how to call it. Um, and that uh, function fortunately is implemented already, and it's called processing algorithm help. And there I just put in the this ID native uh, column buffer and then it outputs how do I scroll here then it outputs the a short description of of what this tool does like its name its id then short description and then what different parameters input parameters it takes like input layer uh, a distance uh, and then uh, some some options which you can still configure and uh, output uh, what what it puts out actually. But let's not stick with that that output. Let's yeah. I think we are almost too fast here. Um, feel free to. Uh, just copy that that part here, that uh, search expression, because yeah, then you don't have to type the whole for in loop every time. Yeah, something else which I haven't mentioned, um, because there is so so many different modules and so many environments. Um, what is typically done? Um, is that if you download some code from somewhere, there's usually also this text file requirements.txt. And then there's different tools like Anaconda. Have you already uh, used it? Yeah. Uh, which can use this requirements.txt to install it. Um, especially on Windows, it's really uh, painful to, to get your uh, environment working. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on Mac and on Linux, it's quite okay. Um, so let's uh, let's do a real script in uh, in this with these toolbox uh, algorithms and with uh, our own outputs. Let's come back to our input data set, this damselfish distribution, and you might have noticed. Um, that it's it contains different species so we talked about that before just to show them there's I don't know how many different species which uh, share um, which shared uh, habitats or species range maps here and um, our our task for here is now 
that we want to output one raster file per species to um, input into further analysis um, because raster is often much faster or much conven more convenient to do uh, certain counting operations or, or combinations. Um, but if I now go and um, define a filter for every single one of them and export it and then rasterize it, it um, that's going to take forever. So that's a, a really good uh, chance to use a script. And our uh, model builder tool, this graphical tool, uh, can't really compete here um, because it, it, it doesn't have loops. So we can't say for every unique value in species do this and that. Um, down here in this, in this toolbox, there's not only the models, which we can define ourselves, uh, but there's also scripts uh, and there's these predefined tools and the first one of them is called create a new script. Um, now that's again one of those built-in uh, editors and you might have noticed but I'm not a huge fan of these. Um, so which is why I tend to use uh, this other console on the side to explore and then copy it to, to the actual script editor. And um, our logic is now... Um, I guess it would be possible to use Biter as well to, to write the script. Mm, yeah. Yeah, it would, but not you can't run it in Spider. That's yeah, the problem. Run, so you can write it in in Spider exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that actually. Yeah. So let's open Spider over here. If it opens. It's already a long sent a sec second. Can I make the font larger here? Yes. And over here too. Um, but why we need this this other con uh, this other console? Where did I put that now? Oh yeah, here. Um, why we need that other console is uh, exactly for these documentation, for these help texts of, of the algorithms we want to use. Um, this is something which in the future hopefully will, will be somewhere on the internet. Um, right now there's still the documentation for the old, so if I search for Kugis processing uh, framework, okay, that's a really old one even, but even if I, show the one for no okay for the current hey if i go to this document ah it changed okay if i go to the current documentation um then there is quite a good help desk on uh, help quite a lot of help uh, for uh, using this processing interface. Um, for example, here there's one one known chapter on using the processing algorithms from the console. And uh, this is the, the old help system. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, it's not yet updated, so we don't know uh, what to use. And there's um, still also the different algorithms, where was that? Oh, here. Um, in, in a long list. And you see that there's even uh, different things still too, which don't show on our installation because we don't have any laser scanning tools installed or we don't have any Orfeo remote sensing toolbox installed and uh, we don't have R installed on these on this virtual machines either. Um, but there would be tools to directly connect to R too and tout them to like uh, 
was it called surface model analysis um, yeah but these these tools are not perfectly up to date but we might we might try to use them instead of the console um, so we have a few steps uh, which are involved to rasterize our species range maps um, first we want to first we have to set the, the environment um, especially here in the console for trying things out how they work um, we have to import our process or oh, we already imported processing but we also need OS path I'm gonna show you in a moment why um, and we have a few in input variables or oh, let's write it all in, in Spider. So. let's have OS dot path and processing here And we have a few input uh, variables which we which we need to use or which we which we want to have as an input. Um, that is um, the the input vector layer layer, um, and I list them up here uh, because that's how. Uh, the toolbox in the end will know what what is going to be the the nice uh, input forms uh, like the different user interface elements and uh, there's a trick here in how to name the variables uh, and uh, to to create the the labels for those user interface elements um, you take uh, the variable name and um, and uh, replace like, or the other way around. You take uh, how you want to la be to have your user interface element labeled, for example, the input box, um, and replace every space with an underscore. And that would mean, for example, if I want to have my um, input layer be labeled species uh, polygons, that would just replace this space with an underscore. And then um, that's the other trick. It's a double comment um, method, like the metadata for the tool is, is behind a double comment, behind a double, what's called, hashtag uh, design. Um, and uh, the format is a bit weird. It's, it's uh, first the, the name of the variable and then the um, equals the, the type of the variable. So we want to have that, we want that to be a vector layer of type polygon. And that's something which unfortunately is in the documentation. If I find where I put that here. I put the link in in the uh, course website. Um, but I find it hopefully here too. You can see that's exactly what we just did, like this double comment and then the name of the, of the variable and the type of the variable. Um, and these are the, the variable types which are uh, which are possible with this list and what we just use is vector and then we can specify more closely that we want to have a polygon vector ah no it's done here um, maybe let's save that already as a script I'm gonna copy and paste everything into this uh, script editor. No, sorry, one step, one step too early. Because um, the same way of uh, you specify variables, uh, you can also specify the name and the category of that of that tool. So if I now would call that tool 
um, rasterize species. And here it's the same weird opposite uh, assignment operator. So the the category is on, or the the type of the of the of the variables on the end, and the, and the value is in the front of the name. Um, and there's name, and then there's group as the second one. So if we again use the conservation geography as a group. Does the order matter? No, it does not. It does not at all. So. And I just copy and paste that in here and then save it. And again, just save it in the in the default directory because that's where QGIS is going to search for it. So call it something.py. And weirdly enough, I have to close that so it, uh, until it shows up over here. And here there's now this tool rasterize species in a category conservation geography. And it already allows me to select the input layer, which is called species polygons. So that's the first step for having our input variables. Mm, yeah. Uh, another another uh, input we we need immediately um, is uh, the attribute like the column name uh, in which our species are stored, and I just do the same thing here: species column name, and this now should be a field, um, which I again took from this documentation over here. Maybe I'll move that somewhere else. So, um, like I took this field uh, and a field can have uh, can be connected to a layer of, of, of the other inputs. So which is also what we want to do. So we want to uh, make sure that this field is actually a field in, or this field is a, is a column in our species polygons layer. And again, maybe we can try it out already, whether that worked. Oh no, no. back here. And I can now choose a layer and then fields within that layer. Um, I'm I'm going to add all of the all of the variables here now, um, and going to reveal a bit later on for what we really need them. Um, uh, another one is. Uh, the name for for a new column, which is going to contain uh, the presence value, that is uh, uh, what we want to have in the no in the uh, raster file as a value in the end, um, and this is a string variable. And I call that presence column, column name, and it's string variable because we just want the name uh, to to create a new a new uh, column. Um, then we want to have a value for this new column, column. Um, it works the same way. 
which we're going to fill into there. Um, and this is because we decided it is uh, going to be a number. Uh, and finally, we need an output directory where to put the ready, readily calculated uh, rasters. And this is going to be of the type folder. Surprise, surprise. Uh, folder needs a default location. Um, unfortunately, like uh, a default value, a number actually too, sorry. Um, the string and the number and the folder, all three of them need a default value. Otherwise, uh, this uh, processing toolbox will will not uh, execute or it will show an error. Uh, so for string, for the presence column, uh, I just call that already presence. Then we also don't have to type them in. And the default uh, value for, for the raster uh, cells then, uh, how, how to burn it in, in into the raster. Um, I'm going to choose one and as the default folder um, I'm going to go with the current folder which on on Linux is dot slash um, so yeah I hope that works because I tried actually something else but we're going to see in a moment. Um, should we maybe maybe have a quick break of ten minutes because we start before we start the yeah, next I'm largest sure question. thing? So when defining the default value, so yes. uh, for example the string, so you can actually put the quotes or marks. Yeah, there. yeah, because uh, you already noticed this uh, all these uh, metadata definition is actually not Python. It's it's inside a comment in in Python uh, so it's a very it's very specific for this processing toolbox and uh, it does not require any casting or anything for the for the values either so you don't have to quote them or uh, on the contrary if you put quotes they're gonna show up too so, yeah. <laughs> um, what I maybe do still before we take a break um, check whether this If I copy and paste all of that again into this toolbox script, that it already works. Yes. So um, what I now have here is I can select a layer and I could also select a layer from some file, except that we don't have one. Um, then I can select a column. I can type in the name of a new column. I can set the value it should be burned into the raster with and then I can set where the output directory is supposed to be and I don't know, I can just put it into documents and then make a new folder here, Damsel fish and yeah, if I now, I have all the interface but if I now hit run Obviously, nothing happens because we don't we didn't put any code yet. Uh, but let's maybe take a quick break of uh, say fifteen minutes, ten minutes. Yeah. So let's say ten minutes, and then we're really back in fifteen minutes um, <laughs> before we start with actually using the algorithms because that's steep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was it was here installed, but um, if you go to in a second, yeah, yeah uh, it's no. from. Wait, um, Actually, we it's, have link on our website, but and it's from qgis.org dot org, and um, oh, they even have the link here to the to the QGIS three too. Uh, but here, if you click on the download now, it offers you for which operating system you want to have it. And if you want to install it for Windows um, and want to have the, the future version to test it, um, you have to choose this uh, OSGU installer, which I anyway would recommend because it's uh, you can run it later on and would just update your installation where it is and, and uh, not install it. Yeah. 
Yeah, for Linux, it depends what, what you're running. Like it, you should install it from your package manager, but Ubuntu is, but, but there's also the, it's explained here. So if you open here the same tab for, for Linux, then you choose which, which kind of Linux you have and then would uh, explain exactly how you would install which one. Yeah, and we find that version three from there. Yes, uh, it's done here. The, it's here still called 2.99 because